in this video we're going to try and understand more about why the Taylor series work. So, uh, so just a reminder on the Maclaurin series, you would start out with a general case. So let's just say this red line here represents this series. It, 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 this red line here doesn't represent this, but let's just imagine it represents it. So, uh, so with the Maclaurin series, you always center it at x equals zero. So you would demand that the the uh, well, you're, you're trying to find these coefficients in such a way that the red line will map on top of the blue line. So the way you would do that would be to demand that at x equals zero, at x equals zero, you would demand that the the derivative of this matches up with the derivative of this, and then you would demand that the second derivative of this matches up with the second derivative of this. And then at x equals zero, you would demand the third derivative of this to match up with the third derivative of this. By, by you making these demands, the, eventually this red line here will map on top of the blue line. And we've seen this in some of the early videos. So, so with the Maclaurin series, you would start out with a general series. And then your aim is to, to figure out all these coefficients in such a way that this whole thing here will map on top of this uh, blue line. So you, the way you would do that would be for you to demand the first derivative to match up with the first derivative, the second derivative match up with the second derivative, third derivative, and so on. By you making these demands, um, you would eventually figure out figure out your coefficients a a zero. You would figure out a one, and so on. You would figure it. You you would slowly you would slowly morph this red line onto the onto the, onto the blue line. And we've seen this in some of the early videos. Now with the Taylor series, you um, instead of evaluating it at, at, at x equals zero, you would shift everything across by by a and then evaluate it at a. So for example, if I were to give you this f of x equals let's say x squared, that would look like this. Now apply this transformation. Oops, apply this transformation, and then uh, so you put this into here. That would then give you this. By you applying this transformation, it will shift everything across by by a. So, so you with the Maclaurin series, you evaluate it at x equals zero, always, always at x equals zero. But then, but then apply this transformation, then you will enter the the Taylor realm. So, so you shift everything across by a. So, if you look at this, this doesn't contain x, so it will stay the same. Put this into the x here. That will then become a one x minus a. And then put this into here. This will then become plus uh, plus a two x minus a squared, and so on. Um, by you applying this transformation, you shift everything across by by uh, by a, giving you giving you uh, something like this, giving you this, giving you this. So um, so 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 now our aim here. So so we shifted everything across by by a. So our aim here is to demand, so we are, we are now evaluating it at x equals a. So rather than evaluating it at, at x equals zero, um, with the Taylor series, you evaluate it at x equals a. So, uh, so now we demand that the first derivative of this matches up with the first derivative of this. We would demand the second derivative of this to match up with the second derivative of this. And the third derivative of this matches up with the third derivative of this, and so on. By you making those demands, slowly this red line here will map on top of the blue line centered at x equals a. So you would start out with, with a general case. So you would start out with a general case. And then our aim here is to figure out these coefficients in such a way, in such a way that this function, in such a way this red line here would map on top of this blue line. We would, we would, so our aim here is to, to, uh, to, to, um, to figure out these coefficients in such a way that this red line here will map on top of the blue line centered at x equals a. So we would start out with this. So, uh, so we would start out with this. Now to, to map this on top of the blue line, we would demand that the first derivative matches up with the first derivative. We would demand that the second derivative matches up with the second derivative. The third derivative, by us making these demands, eventually this whole thing here will map on top of this uh, on top of the blue line. So looking at this here, so this is our this is our general case. Differentiate this, differentiate this. So this thing here doesn't con con doesn't contain x. So when you differentiate it, it disappears. Differentiate this. Well if you look at this block here, you can imagine this as being a one times x and then this times this would be minus a so, so when you differentiate this, 
this is a constant so it disappears leaving you with just a1 so when you differentiate this it gives you a1 when you differentiate this it actually gives you this when you differentiate this it will give you this so let me just remind you how to differentiate this so when you differentiate this uh, it will give you this but let, let me just let me just remind you how to differentiate this so when you differentiate this um, the, the, the 3 will come down here giving you that 3 a3 stays intact the bubble stays intact and then the power here gets minus by 1 so uh, so that will be squared so it's really you using the, uh, the chain rule and then you've got to time to the derivative of the bubble itself well the derivative of, of this bubble is 1 so when you times 1 it stays the same well when you differentiate this it will give you this so you would start out with this if you differentiate it it will give you this and then if you differentiate it again so if you differentiate this this is a constant so when you differentiate it it disappears if you differentiate this it will give you this now differentiate this so um, so when you differentiate this the 3 stays the same the 2 gets moved down to here that's a 2 here the a3 stays the same the bubble stays the same and then the power here gets minus by 1 and then you times the derivative of the bubble itself which will be the coefficient of x which will be this one here when you times one it stays the same the point is that when you differentiate this it will then give you this and then what was here earlier if you differentiate this it will then give you it will then give you this uh, uh, and then and then from here from here differentiate it again that will then give you this so um, so yeah that, that will then give you this now if you make the demand that the first derivative matches up with the first derivative the second derivative matches up with the second derivative and so on eventually uh, the uh, eventually the red line will map on top of the blue line centered at a i will continue in the next video okay